Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today, I have our guest, Ms. Corinne, who is a 29-year-old CEO and founder of Be Speak Candle Company. She is an entrepreneur, blogger, and social impactor with a mission to provide tools to help people get through this thing called life. After being laid off from her job in, in New York City and moving back to California, she was looking for a way to break out of her funk and be reminded of what kindness looks like. From the search, Be Speak Candle Company was created to help others find joy through consistent intention setting. Through daily intention setting, she's been able to pay off her student loans and start a business. She is a proud Howard University graduate and California resident who is currently saving for her first investment property. Welcome to the podcast, Corinne. Hey, Tiara. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm so excited that this is my first podcast. Ah! I'm just- <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Oh, that's so much fun. I love that because, um, not just because like, I'd be a first, but like, I think it's so cool that so many people are breaking out of their comfort zone and putting themselves out there. Um, so kudos to you for the courage it takes to just rip the Band-Aid. <laughs> Thanks, girl. And thanks for providing this space Absolutely. for me to do that. So I like to co- uh, start each conversation just by asking, what's the dream for you? Ooh, the dream, right? Yes. So, you know, I think like a lot of women, my dream is to have a place where, you know, the job and the work and the finances and the partner all kind of align and come together. And, you know, like I am this hot to trot yogi pilates toting like have two kids but we still do fun things on the weekend and i have a business woman an entrepreneur so um i think that that is kind of a goal a dream um that we all want but through my business and through this work that the um it doesn't look pretty, right? Like in the in-betweens does not look pretty. It's not. <laughs> and even when you get there, right? Like it, it, people don't tell you that it's hard to strap a baby in a car seat and then having to go to the bathroom and know you have to take the car seat. So, <laughs> so with all that, I think that my goal now is to um, be peaceful, right? Yeah. And to yeah. invite all of these things into my life. Um, but from a peaceful space, peaceful place yeah yeah and it's funny that you brought that up so I I I have eight nieces and nephews Mm -hmm. but I recently babysat three of the eight and it it, I looked at it as like okay this is a trial run for mommyhood let's see how the business goes with being a mommy you know all of the things um so the three that I had are eight seven and two Mm. and I was just like and the crazy part, the two-year-old gave me the most concern up front, but she was the easiest. I was like, you can play with me anytime. Right. <laughs> Come on down. That ain't no problem. But it was really interesting to see um, my temporary stint in mommyhood um, and just understanding, like, what works for me, what does it? Like, I don't know that I have it in me to be a single mama. I don't want that life. Um, and not that, you know, anything against it, but I don't want to choose it. Because um, I was raised by a single mother, so I have all respect for it. And I've seen my mother bust her butt. But also, me and my sister were 10 years apart. So seeing my niece and nephew a year and a week apart, I'm like, can't do that either. <laughs> yeah, and just the amount, so similar to you, when I moved back from California, so I was working at a startup in a New York City, I thought that that's the life I wanted for myself, yeah. but one thing you learn about in startups, that things happen fast, right? So growth happens fast, and turnover happens fast. Yep. So I was part of the part that got turned over, and um, I had come to a, a place in my life where New York was just was it was just becoming too much right it wasn't I was I couldn't find myself yeah so when I came back here to California my cousin who were really close in age she just had a little girl so yeah. um, I didn't have anything to do so like you I was you know a mommy for the day and she yeah. was um, two or three years old and again like some of the things that you're are saying about juggling yeah. you know just the average juggle and and I think about being a single mom and I have like so much respect and so much for sure like damn you did all of this for me you know and for my mom like um 
it was just me and her towards the later half of our, our life. But like to recognize that you're caring for a life, but you still have a life, you know? So how does that look? Yeah. So much respect to single moms yeah. for sure. It was even to the point I'm like, well, I wanna go for a run, but I can't lead the kids in the house. Like I just, just that come with we just all gonna be power walking. <laughs> You know what I mean? And, and just trying to figure it out. And like, uh, my, my older niece is seven. So like her and I did yoga together, but like the baby was still asleep. And then like, I didn't want to take a shower. Cause like, like they can keep her, you know, for 10 minutes, but it, it was just like the part, like, all right, let me hurry up. And get it. How do I take a shower? Like, they don't tell you that stuff. Like I have to go to the bathroom. Like, how does this work? Pumping gas is a real thing. Like I need to just, I just need to run in here and just give him just 20 on pump five, 20 on pump five. And you can't, I remember I wanted a piece of cake, right? So I went to like this little cake shop. I'm literally talking to them outside. I'm like, listen, she sleep and in the car seat. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want this cake and you just (laughs) run it out to me. I got my card and stuff like that. But it's just when you experience different things, you become tolerant to people's experiences so exactly. motherhood you know I, I welcome it but I you know I yeah. gotta get ready <laughs> I okay. but I, I I will say I feel like at the end I was the type of parent I would want to be um loving but firm and you know all of the things so I was like I, okay okay <laughs> we, we can do this little we can do this mommy thing <laughs> yeah yeah With the right person because baby it's oh my gosh hats off to single moms and yeah. then I, you think about like where you're at in your life right like because that's something I also felt for was just like well damn if I really want to be intentional about this and about having a child like I really want to make sure that the person I'm with is gonna you know be able to to roll with me with these punches and so starting to think about the people that you're dating the yeah. people that you have situationships with you yeah. know like yeah yeah. What happens if we were to have a baby, then, you know, realistically, who is this person I'm looking at in the mirror, you know? And that's something I learned the hard way. Um, so in 2016, I miscarried twins. And mm. that, the lesson I got from that was be very careful who you choose to procreate with. And yeah. choose can be a passive choice or an active choice. But either which way, you made a choice to allow it to happen. So be very careful who you let knock you up because... I would have never wished that my twins were, weren't here. Right. Yeah. But in hindsight, I'm like, I would have been connected to that for the rest of my life. Like, that's the thing. Like, you can get divorced. You can break up. You can do all of those things. But you yeah. can never change who the, ch- who the father of your children are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a blessing because it's like, you were, you were supposed to be here, right? To the kids that are born. Um, but then also, you know, recognizing that, you know, I'm literally doing this thing called life with this person. (laughs) Like, as much as you don't want to be in a relationship with them, you are, you know what I'm saying? So, Like, even to the point, um, I'm, I'll be 29 this year. Mm -hmm. My parents have not been together since the day I was created, and they Mm -hmm. still have to have some sort of a relationship. Like, to be frank, their relationship is probably better than mine is with him. So, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, you, it's a life bid once you make that, once that situation occurs. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, we talking three decades later. It's not just till you 18. Yeah, yeah. Till one of the three of you die. And it's something, something that's so interesting about like life, when life gets put into a woman, I believe that like everything just switches, right? Like I've had friends who have dated guys for years and we're like, Ooh, and as soon as they you know that come pregnant and they have you know are pregnant like just the the thinking change the mode changes and you know something that they probably were wanting to do for months and years they do at a drop of the hat because there's this other level of you know responsibility this other level of intentionality that they might that they have to live with their life and um everything changes yeah you know they're blessings for sure, for sure. And I will say, even uh, post-mortem, my mm-hmm. twins have been a huge blessing to me. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like um, even though they aren't here, they're still pushing me to be a better person mm-hmm. um, because the drive then becomes like, how do I be the mother I want to be 
now? Like, mm-hmm. how do I prepare to be that person? Um, because I promise you, the whole pregnancy was a surprise, but I guarantee you the twins was a complete surprise. Like, that was not on purpose yeah. <laughs> by any stretch. So I want, and, and then that created that pressure to get ready, get ready, get ready. Mm. So now I'm trying to make sure that I'm ready before it happens. How how long um, in your pregnancy, if you don't mind me asking, were you along before you? Uh, five and a half months. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 I delivered at 23 weeks. So, oh, okay. And you had, yeah. Same thing with uh, my cousin. She, um, it was really hard for us, but she, she had to deliver and she had a stillborn. Yeah. Um, same. And yeah, again, she was really nervous. Like, ooh, I just, ooh, <laughs> kind of snuck up on me there. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I remember finding out it was twins and I thought I was on punk, honestly. Like yeah. I literally asked her, I was like, there's no way that's me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no, really. Did you know? Like within seconds, she's like, did you know it was twins? Twins what? Like, what are you talking about, lady? <laughs> what do you, <laughs> what do you mean? And she's like, yeah, you're having twins. Who is? Wow. Surely not me. Um, and that last, that shock lasted a good 30 minutes like just back and forth like ma'am so how do you so I'm, I'm curious like how from you finding out that you had the twins to um kind of the next day right like what were some of the things that you told yourself to keep going like what were some of the things that really uh, kept you going I need to get my shit together <laughs> I was like oh shit um okay um, and me and the father of the children had uh, a lot of problems. Like we fought a lot, like to the point I had to unblock his number to tell him it was twins. Gotcha. Yeah. Like we had a lot of issues. Um, and really I, I attribute stress to the mis- to the first miscarriage because mm-hmm. um, I miscarried them three weeks apart. So I attribute stress to a lot of it. Um, mm-hmm. and it, cause it was fights and argue, just unnecessary drama, mm-hmm. um, because he couldn't get ready mentally Mm -hmm. um and although he wanted kids like it was something we had discussed um you know as something that we wanted and Mm -hmm. we were planning a future together and all these things but he wasn't mentally capable of not thinking about himself for nine months yeah yeah. Um, so yeah it was it, and, and the reality was in that moment I was like I need to be prepared to take care of these children even mm. if I have to do it alone mm-hmm. like that was my rea- that was my thought at that moment was like there's a strong possibility you might be doing this by yourself mm-hmm. get your shit together and then that thing and that thing that's in women just kind of just it just boom, clicks on. Clicks on, right and then you like, learn like yeah. I take the baby out and I put her in the straw and I come in the bathroom and I you know what I'm saying like exactly. I, you learn how to how to navigate you learn mm-hmm. how to navigate so for sure now we don't took a heck of a tangent but <laughs> yeah, sure. it's all about the same thing right you had to say to yourself and wake up and say what am I going to do today to be better exactly and we're talking about big goals today so as we break down those big goals why do you think baby steps are so important um I think that, you know, to make it short and plain, like your big goal, baby steps is what your big school is made out of, right? For me, I always, you know, when I, oh, I want to lose weight. Oh, I want to look like this. Oh, I want to get my first investment property. And so some of the things that we start to do um, is that we start to research and we start to look at YouTube videos of people who did get their investment properties. And in that type of way, we think that we have made traction a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, staring at it a week later, you know, by the end of the week after we watch all the videos and think we know everything about um, investing in properties, we realize we haven't actually made to- made any steps toward yeah. that, right? Yeah. And particularly for Black women, I think that um, we have, and this is, I'm a little bit going to go off on a tangent, but I think that we have with each other protected ourselves so much and like yes girl go do that mm-hmm. yes that's that goal yeah oh my friend's a lawyer like oh my friends you know this you start a podcast you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we on a podcast yes 
that that becomes what we obtain in right like we 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 yearn for those yes girl moments and so what i wanted mm -hmm. to do with we speak particularly is let's take that energy and let's focus it on smaller steps like girl you woke up today right you had the thought no you had the yeah. thought of doing the podcast right like you talked you emailed somebody that said um you know like we should do a pot or like let's talk i want to try to do a podcast yeah. like because that's what's going to lead you to all of us sitting around brunch you know talking about yes girl yes, right and it doesn't have to be seclusion right like everybody always kind of like goes like real g's moving so silence you know like so people are like you know, I haven't been doing anything. I haven't posted anything on my Instagram. And then bam, you have a podcast. Bam, you're engaged. Bam, you're all these type of stuff. But it's like, where were the uh, dating steps? <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's performative. Like, it's it's like, you know, it's too, we're doing everything towards this big goal. But the baby steps are super important yeah. because that's what makes up the big goals, you know? Absolutely. And I'm such a huge fan of that. Um, so I do a lot of business coaching uh, with mm -hmm. my clients. And... I try to communicate like the importance of taking those big ideas and breaking them down, but mm -hmm. then also taking action. Like research is one action. Yeah. What else needs to be done? You know, and too, mm -hmm. too many people um, get stuck in that research place where you just want to learn, 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 learn. When the reality is you could learn a lot more, a lot quicker if you just did. Right. right. Like, because the reality is your goal doesn't equate to much if you're if it's just in your brain like if you're not taking action in that direction um it's really difficult and consistency behind that action makes mm. a difference um like even if you did i would rather you do 30 minutes a day than five hours once and never do it again exactly exactly like that consistency is where you start to see the results like what are you doing every day to move that needle just an inch closer just just an inch just yeah. an inch and i think that we've been um we know how to make goals right yeah, yeah. Uh, was it was it a uh, smart goals timely oh, measurable yeah. <laughs> achievable all that type of stuff um and one thing that i i've been trying to get away in my personal life is to remove the time from everything. Mm. Um, and I think this goes back to um, a conversation we were having. I don't know if it was offline or here, but um, this idea that we have to have everything done by this right. time. Yeah. You know, like as women, to get everything we wanted or to get like the dream I talked about in the beginning, like the That's dream at 21, like I would not be ready for no kids, nothing, nothing at 21. Like, okay, 25, mm, my 25 self, not really. Yeah. So, compacting like your whole entire life like i'm supposed to be a millionaire businesswoman who's successful with three and a half kids in her own house plus an investment property with a husband in the span between like 25 and 35 yeah yeah and, and it's so true and when i think about like my timeline it was um i was supposed to meet my husband in college didn't happen i was supposed to be married by 21 didn't happen I was supposed to start having kids at 25 and be done by 30. Now I was pregnant at 25, but we hear how that story went. So it's just like, you have to realize like you can't put a timeline on things that involve other people for starters. Exactly. Um, but also like the person I was in college, first of all, I left for college at 16. So Let's start with okay. reality. Like I wasn't mentally, like my brain wasn't even fully developed, let yeah. alone ready for a lifetime commitment. Um, and then especially to, you know, like my, in my mind, it was like, okay, get engaged at, at graduation, <laughs> you know, all of the things, but it's just like, I, I wasn't ready. Um, yeah. But the work that I've been doing for the past couple of years, um, I'm now at a place where I'm like, okay, and I almost um, ended up married to someone in my early 20s. And I remember <laughs> as that really... <laughs> I'm like this. I'm like, oh, we need to go to brunch and just okay, talk. Please, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were, I call him my ex almost fiance. Um, separate from the ex baby daddy. You right. know? <laughs> you got Couple. People. But um, yeah, so we broke up when I was 23. And that actually prompted me to write my first book, 23 and Finally Loving Me. 
And I remember sitting in therapy, like as the relationship was dissolving and like working yeah. on what that looked like. Um, and she was like, the reality is you could be on your starter marriage or you can do the work necessary to have your forever marriage. And I was like, okay. Hmm. Break that down. What's the starter marriage versus so a forever marriage? Her, her point was not that you can't get married young and stay married for forever, yeah. Yeah. but a lot of people who get married young end up divorced and then finding love later in life because they've done the work. Okay. So her point was you can stay in this relationship and you could be married. Like we, I mean, he was looking at rings. So we were very close to getting engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, like he was looking with his mama. He was looking with my mom. Like apparently like. Oh, the mom was involved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, and our families were combined and commingled and all, the, like it was a, yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. Um, and we were basically living as if we were married. So mm -hmm. she was like, you know, you could go back to that relationship and you can get married and you can have the dream mm -hmm. or you can do the work for yourself and make sure that when you do get married, even if it's with him, like when you get married you want to be ready for that and you want to show up to that marriage whole mm. not show up to the marriage looking for it to fill you and i think that that's something that's so important with this idea of like your personality because i know that me personally in relationships i have been guilty of conforming my personality to fit this person right like I don't like basketball, but then all of a sudden I have a favorite team. I have a Jersey. I have all that type of stuff, which is, it's good up to a certain point, but it's, it's empty if you don't have a personality yourself. And I think one of the ways that you develop that personality is that you do the work and it's like, well, what is the work? Yeah. It's all, it's a goal, but a goal kind of lit a goal is who you want to be, you know, what you want to do. And I think this idea of intention setting is, okay, who I am, who am I today? What does she like to do today? Okay, she is going to do that today. Absolutely. I so agree with that. And that's what the book really was. Um, mm -hmm. I spent the year focused on, okay, who is Tierra? What is Tierra like? Um, what don't I like? What will mm -hmm. I tolerate? What won't I tolerate? Mm -hmm. um, and just really just exploring any and everything that I considered. Um, like even to the point I'd always wanted to go to the gun range, but I was in a relationship with someone who didn't. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. whole adult life pretty much like just after graduation was when we met. So I graduated in May and we met in October. Um, so, you know, my whole adult life was him and we did things as a unit. Mm -hmm. And so if he didn't want to go to the gun range, it was just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And then I finally get to the gun range and I'm like, well, shit, I don't like this either. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's that, that conform and not that, because he was like, I mean, you can go, you know, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. he wasn't restricting me, but it was, it just was like, well, I want to do it with you. You know, and it's just like, we were so. Yeah, women, we do that. We were so intertwined that I didn't even know who I was as an adult. Like, literally, I had, um just gotten my first post-college apartment mm -hmm. let's call it august september and by november he had a key like you know what I mean? it's like yeah yeah like, at what point was i no i think i gave it to him for christmas or something like that but like at what point did i live as an as an independent adult and it mm -hmm. wasn't until that relationship dissolved that i like took the time to explore and took the time to figure out um and i'm still working i mean we're five years later and i'm still like mm -hmm like that don't like that tolerate that can't deal with that um you know and just not only in a dating stance but like, mm -hmm. like, like mm -hmm. who am mm -hmm. i as a human yeah you're and alone it, time yeah that alone time is so critical where is it like in a space i think something that you said so beautifully is that like a lot of times people aren't forcing you not to do something right like you they're not saying like you can't go to the gun range. I don't think he ever said you can't go to the gun range, but something inside of you said that I can't do this for by myself. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, what is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whew, that was a <laughs> heck of a, a, a suitcase to unpack, I tell you. Because it, it really, 
after we broke up, I really had to sit and realize, like, why don't I enjoy being alone? Like, and just really sit there for a while. Now, fast forward five years later, I'm like, ooh, I like it here. <laughs> exactly. It, it feels so good. Yeah. And it definitely took that work to be able to just enjoy. But again, like, that's the big picture. But like, those baby steps are, you know, spending time in the house, going to dinner by myself. I discovered I enjoy vacationing alone. I enjoy going to the mm-hmm. movie theaters alone. Like, mm-hmm understanding what that looks like for you mm-hmm, mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. sure so what is wrong quote unquote with having those big goals so so I don't want to say there's anything wrong with having big goals like everybody should have big super goals. big quotations around it <laughs> yeah I think like what we were saying earlier was just the timing mm. right and the daily habits around those big goals yeah so i always tell people like write down your big goal write all the steps that it's going to take to happen even write the dates that it's going to happen who's it going to be with you know where's this engagement's going to happen you know what vacation you're going to take with me you know when you're up in uh in front of a podium and you're talking to thousands of people about your business or your cause or whatever take and write down everything that you want take out all the steps that you want and then rip it up Mm. like rip that joint up like rip well like for real like rip it up because you're you know you know your heart's desire right you know your heart's desire and so you're going to get there because yeah. it's in your heart, it's in your mind, it's who you are. The most important thing is that you're able to remain who you are. And that's from having that alone time, mm-hmm. right? And that's being intentional with your day after you have that alone time. And so that's one of the main reasons why I put a B Speak Candle Company together, which was, you know, I'm like, well, how do I, how do I promote this idea of like yeah. being by yourself and, and, you know, staying true to who you are. And, you know, I make candles, candles is a hobby. So I was just like, you know, I want everybody to just light, just light a candle mm-hmm. for five minutes every day and have that alone time, set an intention. And what will happen is that kind of habit and though, and, and every time you accomplish an intention, it spirals into another, into another. And but you're doing it from a sense of self, right? You're not looking on Instagram and saying like, "Ooh, you know, she did these ten booty exercises. <laughs> I'm gonna do these ten booty exercises." Now, if it gets me the booty, I want. And, that, <laughs> and that's fine, but like also to staying focused and staying intentional. So maybe your time is that you sit down in the morning and you say, "Okay." let's be real with myself yeah I want me a nice booty so my intention for the day is to you know find a youtube video that has leg workouts and yeah. complete those leg workouts exactly. so now you're doing it from a center of yourself and you're but you're not doing it just because you saw it on instagram right because it's an yeah. algorithm and we have to be really careful with that um my background is in education mm-hmm. and i think it the magic number is three so if a kid interacts with a word three times then it commits to memory so you think about all these targeted ads on facebook on instagram um that businesses use and that you know they should use because they're trying to sell their product and get it in front of customers but you have to realize that like when you scroll you know what i'm saying like they're making sure that you see these things three six ten twelve times and you have to make sure that that's actually what you want you know Yeah. yeah For sure, for sure. So what are some things that B Speak Candle Company has coming up next? So um, we actually just finished a Kickstarter. We did a Kickstarter back, um, well, when this is, when people will hear this, we definitely have uh, finished it. But we wanted to um, give joy to essential workers who are going through the pandemic. And so we raised um, around $1,500 to give out candles. So we uh, gave those candles out and um, we developed an ebook of kindness that when you're listening to this, it either may already have gone out or it's going out soon. Um, and so that will be, um, so the ebook will also be on our website. And so if you um, haven't visited, visit the website. And so you'll be able to see the ebook and just really spreading joy and, and, and this idea of um, 
um, like again, attention daily setting and finding time with yourself because that's when you can be the most happiest, right? Is when you are, you should, is when you're by yourself. Um, and then of course it's, um, it's gonna be the holiday time. So we're gonna have a special holiday fragrance that people can check out. And then also just make sure you're up to date with our Instagram and our website to see what really I'm, what I'm doing because <laughs> it's, a, it's a business birth from, from myself, but again, um so happy with what women are accomplishing all around the world all of our um be speak family and friends so yeah just make sure you tap into us socially i love it i love it so what would you say is your number one secret to success what we've been talking about this whole entire time right which is like recently it's been because i've been i've set goals and i've been so um steadfast with them and so like I'm gonna do this like no matter what and it's gotten me up to a certain point in life but recently this kind of gentler approach with yeah. myself and just waking up every day and asking Corinne like what do you want to accomplish today has been the game changer for my business right like yeah. through daily intention setting I started this business you know I'm growing it continue to grow it um I was able to pay off my student loans, you know, and that's just like, I wake up today, I'm going to put this extra amount on my student loans. Don't worry about the interest rate. Don't worry about how big or how small it is, you know, in the whole, you know, big old balance, but what this is what I'm going to do today. So absolutely 100% daily and consistent intention setting. I love it. I love it. I love it. So what final thoughts do you have for the audience? My final thoughts um, to the people listening, if you've listened, you've heard our stories and all the things that we want to accomplish and um, the importance of choosing one thing in the day, I would also encourage you to create community around that. Mm. One thing that that has kept me um, going through this, this process is I have an accountability circle with uh, two of my close friends. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is every day, right? Yours, yours might not look every day, but every day I get up at 5 a.m., we stretch, we journal, um, and we set our intention for the day. And um, this doesn't have to be a group of people who want to do the same things. Like, I need to get everybody who, like, you know, wants to buy a house or yeah, yeah. whatever, like, it does, or wants to get married. It's not like that, but it's creating this circle around your girlfriends where it's not necessarily about you know, the drama that happened on the shade room or, you know, uh, funny memes going back and forth, but it's really like getting together and, and planning and, and being intentional and creating that space. I found was, is such a game changer. So shout out to my two girlfriends, Kira and Akui. So I love, love it. So much. I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. So where can people find you, learn more about your fabulous candles? Um, mm -hmm. Let them know. Okay, so for my candles, you can go to bespeakcandles.com, and that's just B-E, and then the word speakcandles.com. You can find me on Instagram at bespeak, so it's going to be at bespeakcandleco, and um, that's the same for Twitter and Facebook. You can find uh, Bespeak Candle Company on Facebook, and then if you want to follow me personally, um, you can follow my personal page at Coco La Bridge. So C-O-C-O-L-A Bridge. Awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. I hope someone walked away with at least one gem. Um, I know I have walked away with a few. So I appreciate you being here. Absolutely. I'm so happy that I had this conversation with you this you know, this is one of, this was my intention for the day, right? So I definitely encourage everybody, as soon as you get off this call, stop, light a candle, and just literally write one thing that you want to accomplish in the next 24 hours. Love it. I'm going to go light my candle now. <laughs> yes, Thank you. Thank you.